Good evening. My name is Joe Bandel, and I am the last Rosicrucian. Tonight we're going to continue with uh, part two of the Elister Crowley energies and my experiences with them. I left off uh, with Soto. Well, I continued uh, trying to get hold of the OTO and studying Golden Dawn material, cabalistic material, uh, anything that I could get my hands on uh, that would uh, explain some of the experiences that I had. I did get hold of, finally got hold of the OTO, and I had a brief correspondence with uh, Bill. Uh, no, I lose. No, I lose the name. He was the secretary. Uh, it doesn't matter because this is not about names, but he had some very good advice for me. He was, I told him about my experiences with what I called the soulmate cycles. I told him about my experiences in crossing the uh, great abyss. And uh, he said, part of the, 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 what a person needs to do is they first they create their own paradigm or their own belief system, which I was in the process of doing, or I had done a pretty good job of that. Then he said, uh, what you need to do is you need to make it compatible with the Holy Kabbalah, the Tree of Life, uh, which was the system that the OTO used, that Aleister Crowley used. Yeah, Bill Heydrich, the name of the, the name. And so I started studying, trying to form a, a bridge of compatibility between my own belief system and the Kabbalah. So I began to study the Kabbalah very seriously. Now, my own belief system that I had developed was very simple in a way, and it was based on uh, the scientific theory of Dewey Larson. And it's worth mentioning because uh, of how the simplicity and what I was trying to do. Okay, Dewey Larson basically said that he had the reciprocal field theory. He said that everything was created out of vibratory motion, which would be scalar motion. Uh, and scalar meaning uh, like the photon expanded outward in all directions in a sphere, that expansive uh, motion. And then it would contract back toward the center, toward source but in the straight line, in the most straight line. And what, what that was, was the outer wave energy of light photon and the inner scalar of electricity as it tried to go back to source in the most focused way possible. So the very highest level uh, of vibratory motion, that outward and inward, uh, was photon and electricity, and it was vibratory. I considered the outward expansion as male, and the inner, inward as female energy. So right from the very beginning, I identified male and female in that way, with expansive and embracing, if you will, energies. and. I put that spot as the top, as Kether, Kether, if you will, uh, one of the Sephiroth on the Kabbalistic system. The next stage, Chakma on the Tree of Life, 
so far. Uh, magnetic whirling energies, the magnetic field energies, rotating magnetic fields again north and south. They're the cone of power expanding or dispersing as the north pole energies or focusing inward as a magical uh, cone of power, uh, magnetic south pole energies. But again, dual. All of these things were dual in the male, male, female, expansive, uh, constrictive, or inward. Uh, third, the third stage, bina, hydrogen. Because what you're doing, okay, you got light, you got electricity, you got north pole expansive, south pole constrict, and when they merge, you get a sphere. A rotating sphere the simplest sphere in three dimensions and that's hydrogen the very first element now Dewey Larson believed that there was two universes there was the universe of space-time which we call physical reality and the universe of time space which was its inverse its reciprocal and he believed that all things existed in both universes at the same time. So time was really three-dimensional, not linear, as, as we said. You know, it doesn't really matter about all of that, whether you believe it or not, because what we're talking about is hydrogen as non-physical or having astral properties. And what I did, what I took from his idea was the astral planes as elements. And there are 118 elements plus the rotating magnetic field energies plus the photon or electron. So there's 120 levels. And I just said, okay, the astral planes are 120 levels. And I just made a map of the astral planes with 120 levels. Uh, and I'll briefly go through these because I located the Tree of Life, the Kabbalah, on these 120 levels and it fit perfectly and I'll tell you how, how it is. Okay, uh, Chesed, Helium. Helium was the first inner circle. Okay, an element, an atom, has seven possible electron rings. And what I did was I just took these electron rings and I, I said, each one of these is a kingdom. Each one of these is a significant element or a sephirot. So helium had two electrons and that was a spirit or archetypal worlds. Uh, neon had eight electrons. They were the abstract mental energies, Gabura. Tifereth was argon. Again, eight concrete mental or the physical senses of awareness. Krypton had 18 and as Netzach, or however you pronounce it, upper emotional energies. Uh, xenon had 18, the lower em emotional, and that was Hod as his correspondence on the Tree of Life. Radon had 32 electrons or sensory units. Every electron was a sensory unit. That, had, that was etheric, yes odd, or whatever. Okay, that was very dense. And the last one is element number 118, Oganeson, was recently discovered, again, with 32 electrons or sensory elements to form an astral body. That was Malkuth. So we have the lowest possible astral body, if you will, 
was the elemental body with 32 sensory inputs. Uh, radon, these are all Nobel gases that with the complete the electron circuits. Uh, again, 32 inputs, sensory inputs forming the etheric body. Uh, xenon having 18 electrons inside it, uh, completing that circuit of 18 electrons is a lower emotions astral body of lower emotions. Uh, Krypton with another 18 was an upper emotional body. Each one of these forms an astral body. This was my simple way of doing this. Uh, argon at 18 also, that was uh, concrete mental. No, it had eight, I'm sorry, argon has eight, eight sensory, and that was the physical senses, but uh, astral awareness, astral body, because all of these elements existed in the space-time universe and it's reciprocal, the time-space, universe, the time-space universe was the astral universe. Uh, uh, neon, another eight, this philosophical abstract mental energies. Helium and hydrogen form work together uh, to form chesed, and that's above the great abyss. There's actually spiritual energies uh, and it's archetypal because Hydrogen and helium only had black and white. That's why at the archetypal levels, everything is simply black and white. Uh, then the whirling energies of chakma or uh, rotating magnetic field energies and kether at the top, the photon electricity. I'm running out of time. Uh, I'll be tying this in together, but that's how I laid out the tree of life on the 120 levels and it fit perfectly. Then I went through and I placed other magical systems on that 120 levels. They matched perfectly. If you know anything about studying the Kabbalah, it's associative and if it fits, it works. So this was, this was the process and everything was fitting beautifully. Uh, anyway, I will continue this in my next video. Thank you for listening.